We might see a deal on taxes. We might see one soon. We hope we'll see one. We've got a market that's up 13 points as Wall Street tries to digest whether or not this is going to happen or not. The president, uh, he wants to get stuff done. He wants to get things passed in Congress. And when you look at what happened with repeal and replace, it's clear he cannot rely on his Republican staples to be there for him. Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, you know, they talk a good game, but repeal and replace didn't happen. So how can he prevent that kind of scenario when it comes to tax reform? We're going to ask Wisconsin Representative Congressman Sean Duffy. He's here. But first, as we await Ms. Sanders, I am joined by Rhino Trading Partners Chief Strategist Michael Block and Fox News contributor Steve Cortez as we look at a market that's still higher. Let me ask you this, Steve. Do you think tax reform is baked in, and if we don't get it, the market tanks? Or do you think there's you know, some fundamental things to be excited about right now in this economy? And if tax reform happens, that's the icing on the cake. No, Trisha, I do believe that stocks, uh, it's been such an incredible rally since the election. That leads me to believe that there is optimism baked in and that if we don't get it, we're going to see a correction. I don't know that the market tanks, but it would worry me about the market uh, mm -hmm. if we don't get it. Uh, but having said that, there's some really positive signs. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, this dinner tonight, I almost want to volunteer to be a waiter at the White House, Trish, because I would <laughs> love to overhear uh, eavesdrop on these conversations tonight. All right, I'll be your bus girl. We, we can tag right, team it, it, right? Because it, <laughs> it would it. be interesting to see that. Listen, I think it's a step in the right direction. Michael, <laughs> it, the, the one thing that, that Americans have been so frustrated by is this gridlock in Washington. Nothing is getting done. And we saw more evidence when it came to health care on that front. Tax reform is actually pretty important. We need to create a more competitive landscape. And I am happy to go out on a limb and just tell you that flat out. As a business reporter, having covered industry for as long as I have, it is not right that we essentially, Michael, all in, have the highest tax rate of anywhere in the world for businesses. When you factor in state and municipal taxes, that is wrong. We need a more competitive playing field. Why are we letting business go elsewhere? Will it change? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still laughing about Steve being a waiter. Hey, Steve, maker's mark uh, on the rocks over here. Uh, with, you know, side of supply, with a uh, supply side on the side, please. So getting back to that, though, Trish, um, the thing with health care is this. It's one thing to say to people, and we can argue whether this is really the case if you're going to repeal uh, Obamacare, but we're going to take your health care away as opposed to we're going to cut your taxes. To me, this is going to give you money. These are apples Back and oranges. And I've been earned. saying it all along. When when healthcare when the healthcare uh, changes failed, everyone said that's it. He can't get anything done. I said no. And you know, mind you, you know, I know Steve is, has been a big Trump supporter from the beginning. I never was. I'm not. You know, I'm not a guy who voted for Trump even. But I'm looking at what he's doing now. He's having this dinner tonight we're talking about. He is reaching across the aisle. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He promised deal making, like him or not. He's bringing this about. Well, you know, I think this is important what you're saying, though. In other words, you were not a Trump supporter. You said you didn't vote for him. But you are a financial guy. And yeah. you are trying to make money in this environment. Yes. And you want the best for the American economy. When you look at the idea of cutting taxes, is this what we need right now? Yeah, I think this is going to be something that creates a halo effect. That's going to create confidence, business investment, investment in training people. People, are, co companies are going to be motivated uh, to say, "Hey, we're going to spend more money now on training workers, mm -hmm. on capex, getting things going." We feel like this government has our back. We, they trust us, and we're going to trust them and do that. Is okay. it? Is it? And I would also say, I don't think it's a completely baked in as we were talking about. I think it's marinating. We're making all-time highs here, but remember. I said I'm not a Trump supporter, but I try to be unemotional about these things. There's still a lot of money managers out there who want Trump to fail, and they're, and they're voting with their feet. They're trying to be short this market. Well, the S&P yeah. 500 is, is right below 2,500. And if it gets through there, what I can tell you is the way dealers are positioned, we could see a whoosh up here. You know, I, I, I've heard a lot of people say that. In fact, Adam Johnson, who's on the, phone, uh, on the show quite a bit, was just saying that the other day, uh, that he actually thinks there could be tremendous upside ahead, maybe 23,000 on the day if they get tax reform through. I sure hope he's right. I hope you're right, Michael. Um, you know, you see, if you've been around uh, finance and you've been around politics, uh, and it, when, when you look at what's happening right now, in other words, this big dinner inviting Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to the White House, what does that tell you about the president and, and his desire to really move tax reform forward? Right. Well, you know, I think it tells us a couple things. One is that in many ways, Donald Trump is really a post 
partisan president. Yes, he is a Republican, uh, but the Trump movement was not an, an establishment movement of either party. It was its own party in many ways. And so I think he's showing us that. But even more importantly, uh, what he's putting symbolically forward uh, in front of the American people is just how important tax simplification and tax cuts are, something we haven't done since 1986. 1986, I couldn't drive a car yet, Trish. That's how long ago that was. Mm -hmm. We so badly need this, and we need it most of all for the middle class. The wealthy have done well in this sluggish recovery that we've been in for a decade now. Middle class Americans have done terribly. I here, think here. that was the fuel politically yeah. for the Trump movement. Absolutely. But now it's not enough just to speak to them. He has to deliver. And how do we deliver the quickest, best way? Simplify and cut taxes. You know, here's the reality, guys. We are living in an hourglass economy. I started talking about this um, back in 2001, believe it or not, uh, doing a story on what was increasingly looking like an hourglass economy. And we are effectively there. We just are. We have a lot of people on the top. We have a lot of people on the bottom. And the middle class is getting squeezed. And by that, I mean people that are going to work every day and they're doing their darndest to save, but yet they're, you know, a few hundred bucks away from real problems. And, and they're the ones that get penalized because it's their kids that don't qualify for the financial aid for college. It's their families that won't qualify for the financial aid perhaps that they need because they've lost their home due to Hurricane Irma or Hurricane Harvey. I mean, it's it's people that are out there working every day. And, and Michael, they really feel like they have been shortchanged in this economy because, you know, if you don't have anything, if you just say, I'm not going to bother, you'll get a check from the government or you'll get Medicare. But if you're out there working and you're struggling to save, your future's very uncertain and you got nothing to show for it. Here. Here's here's what we need. You mentioned 2001 when you were doing some work. So we had the we had the George W. Bush tax cuts. So what happened there? We had this great expansion and then something happened. But let's get back to the, like, the middle class today. Mm -hmm. What do they need? They want their wages to go higher. Right. How do we do that? The unemployment rate's under 4.5%. According to classic economics, wages should be higher than they are, but they're not. There's a structural issue here. A lot of it has to do with productivity. How do you raise productivity? It gets back to companies spending more money on CapEx, innovation, train, retraining workers. So if, maybe that should be part of this tax plan. We're talking about a 15% corporate tax rate. We'll see if that happens. I'm a little skeptical to get it that low. Well, but, in, Michael, but in the midst of that, how about we do something to give companies tax credits for helping train workers? Productivity sure. goes up. Wages go up. Sure. It makes everyone happy. Sure, that's sure. What, that's no, what needs no, to happen here. No, I'm all for that. We 